Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, do you reuse old ink bottles? Do you relabel them? <laughs> Let us know down in the comments. So let's take a look at some pens. All right, so these are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. From left to right, we have the Geha 722, a 1970s German pen. The Waterman Karen, which is a modern pen. Uh, Senator Silver Fox, which I'm pretty sure is on its last week because it's pretty empty. Uh, Petrom and, and it's a 1970s pen. A Petromatic, which I believe is from the 70s. A Luxor, didn't write the number on it, 156. I should write that here in the video description real quick. Uh, Luxor 156, which obviously is from 1930s Germany. A Lamy Safari, which is from uh, 2010s Germany. Nakaya Decapod Twist, which is from... When did I get that? It's been a while. But anyway, fairly recently. And finally, the Central Pen Ladies Pen, which is from 1950s or 60s Czechoslovakia, which, yes, it was a thing back then. As always, I'll be doing my writing samples in this Cognitive Surplus Notebook. Okay, so one thing I noticed from last week is we have here a little bit of souvenirs bleed through from last week's writing sample. Uh, the Offending Pen. It's the Schaefer Legacy too. Surprisingly, oh, okay, a little bit from this pen also. Uh, the Schaefer Legacy 2 is empty, so we won't be hearing from the Schaefer Legacy 2 this week. So, with the Geha, I, I should show you the pen before I write with it. So this pen kind of took a back seat once the Schaefer was out, but Geha 722 is, oh, actually, I see this one's going to be empty next week too. This is uh, one of those slim black vintage pens I like that you can get for a lower cost, usually. Um, Geha, and it's a converter, oh, I'm sorry, it's a piston filler rather than a cartridge converter filler, so I don't have to worry about finding cartridges to fit. Geha, and it's actually a gold nib, and it has that reserve tank thingy. So let's see how it writes this week. Oops. So Geha 722 with an oblique broad nib. Uh, that means that it slants to the side. And the ink in it is a Roshizuku. Murasaki. Shikabu. Which apparently is so named in honor of a Japanese poet. A lady poet, as a matter of fact. So since it is an oblique nib, one thing that this particular method of swatching does not show off the greatest. It, um, so I may have to redesign my swatch, I don't know. So on my reviews, I'll do this critter, trying to show the oblique nature of the nib. Don't know how well I succeed, but... Uh, you know, I'm always trying new things. The swatches weren't always part of uh, pens in use either. Yeah, I'm drinking tonight. Blueberry tea. We're on to the Waterman Karen. I think these newer exposure settings are definitely showing that this finish off better. Because I've always thought in my videos it looks like a black pen with a thin red line. Uh, definitely I don't think it shows up on camera as well as in person, but such a nice pen and I, I think the inlaid nib is kind of fun. I saw recently Schaefer came out with uh, the Legacy again with that same nib, 
part of me is curious to try it. Part of me says, no, I don't really want a new pen right now. So that part of me wants, oh, I guess I should name the pen. You know, I'm heading soon into summer uh, where I don't get any checks. So, uh, you know, budget for it and everything. So, you know, don't worry that I'm suddenly destitute. But I always have that emotional, ooh, don't want to spend money. So uh, and then I usually splurge once I get my first paycheck in the fall again. Like, oh, look at all this leftover money I have. He. <laughs> I don't really laugh like that. I don't know why I just did that, but I did, so deal with it. This pen's also just about empty because this, this ink is so much fun to write with. And, of course, this pen is a good one for showing off a nice ink like that. You know, it's a very sheening ink. Um, it sheens sort of on this paper. Just not as well as, you know, some better papers. But, yeah, it yeah, gives you a clue. And I know sometimes with some of my old exposures, I couldn't quite show it. So anyway, I'm kind of curious. Uh, adapting the exposure of the camera so the pens look good seems to show off the ink a little bit better. At least that was the feeling I got last week. Uh, this is the Senator Silver Fox, which I put in air quotes, because I don't have model numbers. And I really should write to Senator because they still exist. They don't just make pens like this anymore. Uh, and see if they have any old information. Hey guys, I've got a lot of your old pens that I wish you still made. I like them. Silver Fox starts with an S, doesn't it? Silver Fox. Yipe. And the ink in it is Pelican. Pelican. 4001 Royal Blue Had a little bit of a kerfluffle with that ink I just discovered this week. Um, so I uh, You get these empty bottles and some inks are sold in a really inconvenient bottle and you just think okay I'm gonna use this really nice bottle like, for example, guess what my Pelican 4001 Brilliant Black is in? Is it in <gasps> this bottle? Nope. It's in this bottle. With apologies to a certain other pen company. Who, I love their, their bottles. I actually like their ink a little bit better, but for reasons, for now... The Brilliant Black is in here. So what's in this bottle, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. This ink! No, not the Parker. Uh, the Pelican Royal Blue. Because somebody looked at his shelf and said, uh, Wait, uh, you don't have any Pelican Royal Blue here, even though you've got a whole bunch of it. So I thought, well, heck, I will just put it into this suddenly... I wonder what just beeped. <laughs> I, sorry, I put, I put it into the suddenly empty Parker Quink bottle. And then, when I went to fill a different pen earlier this week with the Pelican Brilliant Black, which you know I haven't done in a while, I was surprised to find I'm dipping into blue ink. What? <laughs> so, that was awkward. So, now I have two bottles of Royal Blue up here. So gotta rethink that one and guess what's in this one besides dust on it quiet stop looking at my dust <laughs> it's a green ink and do you smell it yeah that's sailor epinard because i hate the sailor bottles those stupid little flat bottles uh i do use one at school and em actually probably the bottle this ink was in um as, as a paper clip container in my, we'll call it a desk. What else is up here? Oh, this actually does contain the right ink. <laughs> this really is pilot blue. All right, back to back on topic here, squirrel. <laughs> so this is a patromatic fountain pen. 
they've got a little bit of a story to them. You know, they actually didn't make a lot of their own pens. They outsourced them, which is kind of wild. And you saw my video earlier this week. Patromatic. Don't know much about it, but this is an extra fine nib, which I didn't mention in my video. And the ink in it is the exact, excuse me, I hope I'm not getting hiccups during this video. Pelican 4001 Brilliant Black. I watch uh, way too much British stuff, so, you know, the brilliant is always like, you know, what when I was a kid would have been awesome, only the British seem to go brilliant. Okay. I suppose if you're from Maine, you go wicked. So there's some brilliant black. So that's been going to school with me. Um, well, actually, I guess it just went to school with me today uh, because last night I was going to just edit together my footage and quick film my uh, talky part of the video and all that and discovered there was no writing footage. So uh, I had already inked that up um, just because I thought, well, I should have it in pens in use since I talked about it this week. And uh, then I'm like, oh, this is awkward. So I ended up, uh, you know, filming a second review of it. So, and then I put a link in its video description to the, yeah, I'm drinking again. I put a link in its uh, video description to the original from the side view that you're seeing right now. My next pen has had a little nibble taken out of it. But that's what happens when you buy pens that are... 90 years old. You may have some nibbles taken out of you by the time you're 90. So it's a Luxor 156. Has kind of nice nib. Nice chaste finish. Ebonite, of course. You know, um, part of the fun of this is just how well some of these vintage pens show off certain inks. And this is one I've been thinking all week. Yeah, I can't wait to share this one. Montegrappa. Bordeaux. Which is discontinued, unfortunately. No, we must do the more saturated colors because that's what all the young people are into these days. Well, I like this one, and they discontinued it. Wine. Actually, it kind of looks like what wine would probably look like spilled on paper, at least until it oxidizes. And no, I do not recommend putting wine into your fountain pen. Haven't tried it, but somehow I feel like it wouldn't go well. This pen has been doing envelopes. Uh, it's probably not going to be doing them much longer because I wrote a couple pages of some letters with it just to kind of, because I'm getting bored with it. So this is the Lamy Safari. Noodler, oops, sorry, fine nib. Noodler's Fox. I want to use up some other, either bulletproof ink, or maybe I'll break into an iron gall ink next. And who knows, maybe the post office's machines hate this red. <clears throat> My second to last pen is the beautiful Nakaya Decapod Twist, one of the pens you bought me over the years. And 
beauty that it is. And of course a soft fine nib. I was watching a video today uh, and all of a sudden I am drawing a complete blank about his the channel name. I know the person's name but uh, doggone it, I'm just suddenly drawing a blank what he calls his channel so I'll try to put that somewhere. But he was comparing uh, a Platinum 3776 which is basically what this nib is with a uh, Pilot Custom 7, or is it Pilot Custom Heritage? Anyway, Pilot 74 pen thingy. And, uh, you know, for him, the Pilot 1. And I have to say, I own more Platinums, but uh, Pilot is a good quality writing instrument. Maybe not as flashy, unless you want to spend a lot of cash, but very high quality. I kind of think of it like a Toyota Camry, which is what I drive. Um, not a particularly flashy car, but it does what it's supposed to do, and it does it very well. And right now she is 21 years old, thank you for asking, and still going strong. Albeit with a little bit of rust now. So I'm hoping for a couple more years with her, but, you know, some, some of the cash is getting set aside for her. I'll, uh... <clears throat> I'll know a lot better where my budget is on that because I got a roof I'm buying, but anyway. Where was I? Nakaya Decapod Twist. All these personal details that you don't really need to know. I don't know why I'm sharing, but then again, stuff like that isn't exactly private because Mr. Squirrel, are you getting a new roof on your house? None of your business. That's private. Well, I, I can see the guy up there ripping your shingles off. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, hard to hide. Or if I bought a new car. Hard to hide that. Since I don't own a garage. Now, he asked me, did you get a new set of sheets for your bed? Uh, none of your business. And the only way you'll know is if it is your business for some reason. <laughs> okay. Too much information. <laughs> Let's move on before I say something even stupider. Ah, oh, okay. What is this? Uh, Central Pen Ladies Pen. Because only the little ladies want a little pen. You know, us big, tough men folk, we like a big, strong, girthy pens. Central pen. Uh, one interesting thing, I did a video, in fact, it's been cleaned out so I could work on it more, uh, on another version of this pen. And uh, we had an Isco nib on it, just like this one. And then I also reviewed one that had a uh, um, Bach nib. Oh, come on, just focus already. There we go. I did one that had a Bach nib in the same video. And, but the Isco nib and the other one just failed. And I was like, well, okay, I know they work because this one works. Only it didn't. I was writing a letter and it quit. So, you know, looking back, I know I haven't had that trouble with it. So I'm wondering if it's this particular ink. Because sometimes a particular ink um, and a particular pen do not get along. Uh, like, uh, well, a pen I kind of want to bring out, and probably will once one of these runs empty. I've got my Pilot uh, Justice 95, and I've found that some inks just do not play well in that pen at all. So, uh, uh, some Noodler's pens are like that, too. In fact, some of the Noodler's pens are like that with certain Noodler's inks. So, uh... Yeah, some pens just, for whatever reason, they don't get along with particular inks. Don't know why. Just is what it is. So, hope you enjoyed the pens and inks. Let's take a look. Let's uh, see if I can... Well, let's talk about some other stuff. Alright, so this week, uh, one of the things that came up, I showed you 
uh, the Patromatic in my pens in use this week because it was indeed in use. And what you don't know is that I tried to f put together footage of two other pens first. One of them, it turned out, has a leakage problem. Like it literally drips ink. Uh, yeah, I tried fixing it and no go. So it looks like I got to do some piston work. Yay. Uh, the other pen, so gave up on that one. The other pen, uh, I inked up, or I almost inked it up, but then I looked at the footage from the writing sample and it's got a burr on the nib. And I said, oh yeah, I was going to save that one for when I get around to doing a video on nib smoothing. So, third time, I went to the Patromatic. I thought, hey, this one was a good one. So I filmed my talkie part, you know, this part. And then I pull out the video footage to go editing and, oh, no writing sample. I did one. I've got it in my notebook. I've got photographs of it. But uh, no actual footage. So apparently somewhere, I, I, I know that day I did a lot of batch filming. Apparently somewhere during that day I forgot to copy one video clip over and uh, it was gone. So quickly that night I just went ahead and refilmed the footage. And, uh, you know, then I put a disclaimer in there somehow that, yeah, this isn't really my first impression. That I sent a link to my side view footage of my actual first impression. But, yeah, that was great. So I think I need to move the uh, the two naughty pens to my pen repairs folder uh, so I don't attempt to use that footage again. <laughs> so the joys of being a pen reviewer. Um, and I'm kind of looking forward to the school getting close to ending because I want to do l some videos where I just compare pens rather than, oh, look at this pen I bought that's not new, but, you know, I own it. So, looking forward to doing some of that this summer. I'm trying a slightly different angle because I can look off screen like this and look at my outline and then look back. So, we'll see how it goes. And yes, I am drinking out of a squirrel mug. Alrighty, what was next? Oh! <clears throat> so, as, as I showed you while I was filming this, uh, I will recycle bottles that I like. So, ran out of Lamy Black, I put Pelican Black in it. Um, some bottles I don't like, like the Sailor Bottle. Sorry, drew a blank there for a second. But I have found purposes for recycling them. You know, I recycled them as, uh, well, the last one I recycled, because I haven't recycled very many of them, I recycled as a paperclip dispenser in my desk at work. Um, I think... If I ever empty one of my Ackerman bottles, that will become some, uh, will be refilled with a bottle of something. Um, some bottles are just not practical, like like the Pelican Edelstein bottles, just eh. so uh, probably won't be repurposing those. Um, some of them just have like you know the Schaefer bottle. What am I going to do with that? Oh, holding up too high when it's empty. I don't know. I don't care for it. Parker bottles aren't bad, but they're nothing great. But So who knows if I'll repurpose one of them. As you saw, I did apparently repurpose a Pelican bottle. So, uh, yeah. And I've emptied out now two Colorverse bottles. And uh, they're cool, but what do you do with them? So, anyway, just a thought I had. Um, especially, I'll get to another topic here in a few minutes. that kind of gets into why it was on my mind this week. Um, so I experimented a little with the writing footage. I got some comments last week that it was easier to see the ink. I, uh, so I tried to do that again this week. So, uh, you know, I'd like to know what you thought of that. But, uh, anyway, I also have this huge back catalog of videos filmed with the old way of recording and exposing. So... That's not going away anytime soon. Uh, let's see. Oh, exciting news. Uh, last week, because I was all on that Slim Butte thing I never mentioned, I got my second shot of co the COVID for COVID-19. So, Moderna shot. So, uh, 
Friday, I felt horrible because it was Thursday I got the shot. Friday, I just was sore all over. Uh, there were points in the morning when I just had sweat pouring out of my armpits. And other points that morning, I'm just like, oh gosh, it's so cold in here. And uh, couldn't seem to find a happy place. And end of school came and I just, pew, out the door, going home because I'd had enough. I wanted to call in sick, but some of my colleagues who had had COVID but got the shot the same night as me, um, they were a lot sicker. And so they were in school. So I'm like, okay. I know I'm not sick. I know it's just my immune system reacting to the vaccine. So it means the first shot was working. But uh, yeah, that was a long, miserable day of teaching. Uh, but by the end of next week, I should have as much immunity as I can get. So happy news. Um, and actually, for the past few weeks, this county and one or two counties in the neighborhood have had no recorded cases of COVID-19. I'm not saying no cases, because there's a lot, there are, there is definitely that element that, oh, I ain't gonna get tested. Nobody's gonna prove I ever had COVID. <coughs> I ain't COVID. So, uh, you know, they could be lying on their deathbed denying it, probably. Um, another topic, which, as I film this, it's Earth Day, of course, this video comes up the day after Earth Day. But, uh, you know, um, I, I was think I one of the things that bothers me about the fountain pen thing is, one, the packaging. You know, I try to recycle some of it. And, you know, any of you who have recently bought pens from me, because, yes, under the table I've been selling a couple of pens. Uh, nothing too organized yet. That They just happen to say, hey, I'd be interested in buying X pen that I saw you mention in X video. So... Oh, yeah, I did say I'd be happy to get rid of that. So I sold a couple recently, so that's good. Uh, and they all got them in recycled packaging, unless they had the original packaging still, but I don't think any of those people did. Uh, if you ever saw my pen repair supplies, that's all in repurposed pen packaging. Um, but, you know, you end up the mailing stuff, you end up with the foam junk, um, it's a res it, there's a lot of resources to it, even if you're buying vintage. You know, maybe if I were going to a flea market and buying, you know, oh, here's this pen off the table. I will buy this from you. That'd be a little different. But, you know, it's not a very resource-friendly hobby. Uh, and then you, the stuff you throw away, like when I use this up, what do I do with it? And if it's one I don't like, what do I do with it? We, we had that discussion a few weeks ago about dump the ink down the sink. Oh, it's got some kind of creepy stuff in it. So, do you want that going down the sink? Um, if it just sits there, what good does it do? And honestly, what's going to happen to all this when I kick the bucket? So, uh, oh, big vintage pen will buy it, right? <laughs> uh, that was my April Fool's video from a few weeks ago. <clears throat> but anyway, it just has me had me thinking... A little bit about the environmental side of this hobby. I, I will say there are hobbies that are much more environmentally unfriendly, but uh, definitely something that I realized you know, I should keep in mind. Um, you know, these books behind me that you can't see at this angle because I'm sitting square in front of them. That's a lot of resources. So, uh, but the other nice thing about these these pens is I you saw one tonight from the 1930s with proper care and maintenance a lot of them can last so uh you know I guess that's uh I, I don't have an answer right now but uh just maybe something to think about uh, I I've been happy I had not ordered from Goulet pens in several years just you know I've gone vintage and I quit buying inks and stuff and uh, I forget what I ordered recently, but I was surprised because they used to be infamous for their yards and yards of blue plastic wrap and all the crazy packaging, and they really improved on that. Um, I ordered a pen years ago from, I think it was Malaysia Pens, but anyway, they, they sold it in recycled packaging. I mean, it was literally a box from something else that they turned inside out and slapped a new label on. And they used local newspaper to package the pen. And I thought, yeah, you're recycling and reusing. In fact, uh, 
that that's you know something I try to do. I don't always have because because I don't like to keep stuff around either. So I don't have like this huge wealth of packaging sitting around waiting for me to use it. But definitely something to anyway something to keep in mind. And you know one of those things with the online shopping versus in person. All that online shopping needs packaging, whereas in the store it can be sold in bulk. So there's just a lot to online or a lot to online shopping to think about besides the whole you're not supporting your local businesses but we don't have a local pen store so i don't feel bad uh, and then the last topic I, I don't have too much to say about it that hasn't already been said but uh, i was uh pleased to see that there is a verdict in the george floyd case and uh you know i think it was the right one uh last summer i I think it was in June. I know I we were still I was still heavily locked down and I had still had my COVID hair, but uh, you know it's, it's when all that happened and then you know all the uh, protests started and uh, I made a video about that made a few people unhappy but um, okay I'm just gonna leave it there I I uh, I feel like there are people better qualified to comment but I just thought since I brought this up last summer I should comment again that. Yeah, I'm pleased with how it turned out, but uh, I hope it leads to more systemic change. And uh, I think it has led to a recognition, at least in some quarters, that there is a problem. I, uh, I guess time will tell what kind of action that leads to. And I'll just close by saying this. Uh, on a This isn't in my outline, and this is a little lighter than the, than the George Floyd thing, but Sometimes when you spend too much time reading and watching the news, you really can get wrapped up in it. I'm going to try to remember to link it. I've got a, a an article I read by uh, John Pierce that talks about how really the world is getting better. It's just sometimes we're now facing problems that we have ignored for years. And sometimes... Uh, our perception filter messes with us. You know, we've got a certain view of the world. Uh, and, and sometimes the media mess with it because it doesn't sell well to say, oh, look, crime is down. Instead, oh, look, there was this horrible murder in Baltimore. And uh, it's easy to get this idea that the world is getting worse. I'll tell you, look at the numbers. Uh, imagine COVID-19 had come out 10 years ago. What would we have done then? You know, these lockdowns we did at schools? Okay. Um, it would have been very hard to educate kids at home. Heck, when I was in school, we didn't even have internet. So, uh, what do you do? Uh, and this de rapid development of the vaccine, especially the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines. I'm sorry, those of you in other countries using other vaccines, I'm not as familiar with AstraZeneca and some of the others that other nations have developed. It's nothing against you. It's just where I live. You know, the, these, are, these are the ones I know the best. Um, but it couldn't have been developed that rapidly. That mRNA vaccine thing, I think, holds a lot of potential for the future. And I'm just excited about to see what else they do with that after this pandemic is over. Um, so really, rather than focus on the bad, realize how good it's getting. And the other thing, also realize just because it's getting better doesn't mean, oh, problems are solved, it's all good, let's stop worrying about it. Hey, no, no, don't make a big deal about it. Hush up. It's still there. Um, I just think we're more aware of it now. So... Anyway, those are uh, some random comments at the end of a pen video. I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. And I guess uh, I'm still on that Earth Day thing. You know, how are you on pen packaging? How much of it can you reuse? Uh, do, can you recycle it where you live? Kind of hard. Where I live because they don't have recycling here but even if they did you know you get a box all covered with
tape and whoops. So anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.